there's no point at all oh, oh, oh. And dreaming small seven in the morning we're just getting ready to leave for the east of england leadership academy graduate management training scheme welcome day it's going to be a good day i'm delivering a keynote speech all about the impact that one person can make and hopefully show these graduates that they can make a difference they can do so much they can drive change just because they're not frontline clinical professionals doesn't mean they can't make a difference to patients to the workforce to the system so i'm really looking forward to that I am quite tired, I don't feel particularly well, my skin is really bad, but never mind, it'll be a good day, I get to meet some fantastic people, looking forward to meeting the organisers as well to discuss some other some other things about my package and other, other work, so it's going to be good and I'll see you all later.
I'm 26 years old now. I'm about 10 years beyond my expiry date, as I like to call it. And that's thanks to the NHS. It keeps me alive and gives me a great quality of life. So not only am I still here, I'm functioning well, I'm living a full life, I'm doing all the things I want to do. And the NHS is there that enables me to do that, both in hospital, in the community, and with my home care team funded by the NHS. So I want to talk a bit about my experiences as a patient, but also the patient advocacy and how people can make a difference. Because we often think, as one person, we can't change anything, but the fact is we can. So as I deliver this speech, I kind of want everyone to think, just think about what you can do. Think to myself, what, I, what can I do? What change can I make? Because the fact is we are one person, individually, but together we can make a lot of a difference. And it's about thinking about using your passions, your interests, your hobbies, your tools, your skills, everything you've got to make a difference in your role. Because you know you might think, well, I work in management, but the fact is you can make such a difference to the lives of patients like me. No one in the NHS doesn't make a difference to patients. Everyone plays their role and everyone makes a difference to people like me being able to have the care we have to live our lives and live full lives. So you've heard a lot about my complex medical needs. That is obviously a big part of my life, but it's not all that I am. I am a person, not just a patient. I'm not a collection of symptoms or conditions or complications. I'm a person with a life. And I've been able to affect change in the NHS through my experiences, coming to meetings and give events and giving speeches and working with professionals like you to make a difference. And at this time, a hospice had come on board and my palliative care nurse came around one day when I was 17 and we did my first advanced care plan, my first end of life plan. And we'd spent a couple of hours talking about where I might want to be when I die, what treatments I might or might not want, all the things you need to know for someone planning for their end of life. And we were packing everything up at the end of this visit, and then Beth, my nurse, turned to me and she said, we were talking about things, and she turned to me and she just said, so what do you want to do now? And that was the first time anyone had ever asked me what I wanted to do. My life had been so dictated by, you will have this treatment, you will have this surgery, you will have this and you will have that, and we will do this and we will do that. No one up to that point had ever thought, actually, what does Lucy want? What does Lucy want to do? And it took my nurse, my fantastic hospice nurse, to be the first person to say that to me, and it transformed my life. That one sentence transformed my life. I became Lucy the person, not just Lucy the patient, because I guess I am a patient and that categorises me, but I have a life, just like all the rest of you in this room. I have a life, I have goals, I have things I want to do and achieve. And it was like finally the person had been re regained in myself. So I'd start to see myself as a person rather than an illness and it changed people's perspectives around me because when I reclaimed my identity as Lucy, people started to respect me for that. They started to respect me for Lucy with their life and goals and dreams. I also found that I'm part of a generation that society never prepared for. Young people with life limiting conditions who should not have survived childhood are now living as a young adult and beyond. And it's like the system hasn't worked out that we're actually surviving. We haven't quite caught up with that yet. So I call us the unforeseen generation. You know, science, medical science has kept us, kept us alive, kept us going. And then it's suddenly like we become adults and the system goes, hang on a minute, we weren't prepared for this. So I've almost become a face for these young people who often don't have a voice in society, that aren't seen, that aren't heard. We're, quite, we're often called hard to reach. And a young person one day says, I'm not hard to reach. You could get on a bus, come to my house and speak to me. I'm not hard to reach. We're just seldom heard. We don't have the opportunities. And that's the big thing about my work. I can come to these events, I can go to these meetings, and I can share my experience, but I can also be a conduit for their experiences to come to that table where it matters most. And we are living into adulthood and beyond, and we are living great lives, but we need the system to work out how to support us best, because we are not big children, and we are not little adults. We are young adults with a unique needs, unique wishes, if you ask most of us, we don't really care about our illnesses. Our illnesses form a really small part of our life. We just want to go to school, go and work, you know, go out with our friends, go on holidays, do all the things that we, you know, our peers are doing, but you wouldn't do as a young adult. Go to festivals, which I've been privileged, privileged to be able to do. You know, all these things that we just want to do because the system isn't there to support us at the moment, and I'm trying to change that. And also, the other thing is, I hear quite a lot about involving palliative care patients is that you know, you shouldn't involve patients because they're too sick or they're too ill or they're too busy or their time is too precious. Actually, most of us want to make a difference, so why not spend our time helping the NHS, helping hospices, helping charities? 
You don't know what we want or what we don't want unless you ask us. But the fact is, often people are waiting to be asked. I have stopped waiting to be asked. I'll just go out and do things now. But a lot of patients need that permission. So we need professionals to give them that permission to get involved, share their voice, and do so many different things. It's because professionals have empowered me to do that. They've given me those opportunities. They've taught me the skills. They've given me the knowledge. They've nurtured me to be the person I am. And I want all of you to go away and think, how can I nurture myself, my colleagues, my peers, and patients that you might come across to be that advocate, to be that voice, because we need more voices in the NHS to make a difference. And I mentioned earlier that imposter syndrome is very real. And there's a quote, which I can see up there, from Kath Evans, who used to be the experience of care leader in NHS England. And she talks about imposter syndrome and about being a tall poppy. And what is a tall poppy? So a tall poppy is someone that's not afraid to sit the head above the parapet, to be a leader, to be a mentor to others, to grow their influence, to do many different things. But you're prepared to stand up and fight, stand up and be heard. So we need a lot more tall poppies in the NHS to be able to stand up because there's so much innovation going on on a local level that we never hear about. You might make the slightest change to a form that makes a massive difference to patients. We need to hear about that. We need to stick your head above the parapet and say, actually, we changed the tech form to include this sentence and it made all the difference to our patients. It might be something so little, but we never hear about it. So we need to stick our heads above the parapet. We need to tell people where good practice is happening and where innovation is happening. Because where innovation is happening, that's where we need people to be going and looking at what people are doing. But my personal health budget, once I have the nurses, will be a full wraparound 24-7 care package. 16 hours with a nurse, 8 hours overnight with a carer, and 6 hours of double up care. I'm also able to employ my mum as one of my personal assistants, so much as a personalised care. Because I can evidence that she makes a difference to my life and gives me more flexibility and control, they have allowed that. Now, a lot of innovation has happened here. This is not typical for the NHS, even up to 10 years ago. But personal health budgets now are a new way of managing things. They put us in the driving seat of our care and of our lives. And there's, there's no doubt that giving people autonomy over their care actually helps them make better decisions about their health. It makes, them, it makes them more able to make decisions about their lives. I know the autonomy that I value so much that I've had threatened over the years. When I've got that team back under my control 24-7, I know it's going to change my life. And I can make the package work for me. It's not these are the hours and these are the staff. It's my team, my staff. We work together and we work through it. I've had to do policies and see and. Uh, contracts and all these different things, but I'm able to take over that task and manage my own team. It, it is going to change my life. Personal health budgets, they are the way forward. We need to all know about them, learn about them, because they are going to change the way we do care in the NHS. But there's also innovation within personal health budgets, which are 10 years old now. There's nothing like my package on the, on the market, so to speak, but I hope my innovation will lead to other innovations elsewhere and show you that you can manage very complex needs in the community and you can be creative with funds because PHBs, personal health budgets, they are not any new money. There's no new money in the pocket. It's just taking money out of where they provide the agency care and giving it to me to manage myself. And it's total patient, pay, totally patient driven. But the other thing for me, and the cost will speak for themselves, from the agency to the uh, personal health budget, 30, almost £30,000 a year saved with the carers just by me taking them off an agency and managing them myself. But the nurses, once that goes over, £70,000 a year it's going to save. In the process of giving me what I want, choice and control, I'm saving the NHS money. So once this all is signed off in May, £100,000 a year saved on my care package alone. Now, personal health budgets are not about cost saving, but they are about giving more choice and control. And if we can achieve savings by doing that, why not? Why not look at what we can do? Be creative with the money we've got, because the NHS hasn't got many resources. But if my package alone saves £100,000 a year, why don't we look more into this and using more usage of patient health care? Because I know what I want out of the NHS, and I can tell you to give me the best care without spending an extortionate amount of money on many different services that aren't going to meet my needs. And it's personalised to me. It starts with what matters to you. you know, what do you want, Lucy? What matters to you? My care plan, they're called personalised care and support plans because they are personalised. My care plan has a section about Molly in it. It's got a whole paragraph about Molly because she matters to me. It's got a whole section about my work because that matters to me. It represents me, but so does my package. Creative use of those resources. No new resources, but it's saving £100,000 a year in the process of giving me the best life possible. And the thing is, one person with, a, with an idea, with a passion to drive it forward, 
and the conviction and confidence to know it's necessary and worthwhile and the drive and determination to make it happen can change the system. And that means all of you in this room can change the system. So the patient voice is a critical catalyst in improving healthcare, but so are the professionals, your voices, your experiences, your knowledge. We need everyone to come together and improve the NHS together, not separately, but as one. We know, you know professionals have huge power in the system, but actually we get bogged down with you know, culture and policies and procedures and tick box and hierarchy and just don't pay any attention to that. Just think, what can I do to change the system? What power have I got and what is in my gift to make a difference to my colleagues, to my patients, to, to the system? There's so much we can do to change hearts and minds, to, to give influence to other people. And it just takes one person sticking their head above the parapet for other people to think, hang on a minute, I can do that as well. I can make a difference. We need to rock the boat. So we often hear, you know, well, don't rock the boat, don't do this, don't do that, you know, don't do anything that's going to change anything too much. Actually, we need to rock the boat. We need to shake things up. And the fact is, one person can make a small change that creates a ripple, that creates a wave, but then rocks the boat and then things change. So one person can make a difference to that. And do not underestimate the power you hold within you. I've discovered my power because other people have enabled me. What can you do to enable other people to find their power in the system? And I am one person that's created an endless ripple. And I know when I die and I reach the end of my life that my life meant something and I made a difference. So, what change are you going to make? Thank you. Thank you.